Hi, yogis, Lizzie Lasseter. I have another fresh clip for you today from our deep rest course, which is about somatic self-care. Joining us, leading us, teaching us in this course is the lovable Mary Richards. She's so knowledgeable and so on point with what she shares. She has this really amazing ability to distill extremely complex anatomy and physiology concepts and make them digestible for us yogis, yoga teachers like myself. So this clip is about the vagus nerve, the famous vagus nerve, which is basically, we could say, the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you want to dive into the course, you can find it at www.lassiter.yoga. But the absolute best place to stay in the loop is to join our newsletter we send sparingly at experientialanatomy.yoga. All right, enjoy the clip. Hello, Mary Richards. Hello, Lizzie Lassiter. Welcome to week two of Deep Rest. This is our science lab portion. Explain to us a little bit what these science lab segments are for. What's your vision that we take out of this session? I'd like us to develop a common vocabulary of terms, first and Mm -hmm. foremost, because if we share vocabulary, we communicate with greater connection and ease. And I also want us to have, I wanna help us facilitate our, our neuroanatomical literacy. So that, so that we- Starting with a, the word neuroanatomical literacy. So that we have an actual science and evidence informed understanding of the woo woo aspects of yoga practice because the reality is we're working in a system, yoga, that's millennia old. And what we're finding now through advances in diagnostic and imaging technology, in particular things like functional MRIs uh, and the like, is that a lot of the age old wisdom that we impart on the mat is being validated by data. That's so amazing. Right? And and so we want to understand that so that when we're sharing information with people, we're sharing it accurately and productively. Because mm-hmm. I'll tell you my personal bias, okay? okay. Uh, it doesn't land with me if someone tells me to spin my chakras. I'm like, what? Or to yeah. unknot my grunties, my yeah. you know existential knots. But you know what lands with me is if someone explains to me that a pranayama technique, say a ratio of a, an inhalation count of seven to an exhalation count of 11, uh, actually has a positive effect on our heart rate variability that will put on the brakes in our nervous system and allow us the space, the the physiologic space to shift into a different state of perception. Mm. That's what works for me. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of what we do on the mat is arousing. Okay. Asana is arousing. Even, mm-hmm. you know, running is an arousal activity. Now we will feel great afterwards. You know, you can do 108 sun salutations And you'll feel fantastic afterwards because you're riding the dopamine high. You Mm -hmm. know, you've got the runner's high. But you see, that's actually not enough, if you will, for the long haul. And it's also 
not particularly helpful in many ways for a lot of us because we're upregulating to downregulate. Okay, we're turning the volume up in order to relax. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that feeling we have sometimes after a real sweaty flow class, for example, and then we lie down for a three minute Shavasana and we say, thank God it's over. I feel so amazing. But it's that pool of sweat feeling that because we've upregulated ourselves in the class by stimulating our nervous system, that's actually why we feel good at the end out of exhaustion. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. We've burned up fuel in our tank. And of course that has value. There's a reason why we have a parasympathetic and a sympathetic nervous system. We absolutely need both. And we live in a dynamic state between them. But Mm -hmm. so much of what we do, Lizzie, in my opinion and experience, is we are pushing the gas. We're tired. We think we need to do more. Coffee. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I mean, this is what we, we, we do. And especially, you know, as we look toward new seasons, the new year, et cetera, Mm -hmm. Does anyone make an intention or a resolution to rest more? Yeah. Or, you know, we can say, oh, I want to sleep more. I want to improve my sleep hygiene. But even that is an act of doing. Mm. Okay. And so what I'd like us to understand is that we are, we live in this very dynamic state of equilibrium. And for many of us, we are sympathetic imminent. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're arousal first. Dominant. Yeah, exactly. But our actual birthright Mm -hmm. in terms of our neurobiology, like actually the way our nervous system works, as well as in the context of yogic philosophy, our birthright is actually a state of parasympathetic imminence of relaxed and calm. You're saying that that is the way we're designed to spend the majority of our day in that state? Yes, we have. Yes, I know. It does not feel familiar. (laughs) Get it, especially. I'm just taking a couple notes. So I'm totally with you. I'm just typing a few things. So, you know, the, the context is very important. Okay. We have a sympathetic nervous system so that we can fight, flee, or freeze. Mm -hmm. So we have a sympathetic nervous system to respond to stimuli that is not responsive to a state of being relaxed and at ease and and to tend and befriend. There are absolutely times when you must run or stand your ground, you know, or play dead. Right. You know, like when you realize you need to mail something and the post office closes in 14 minutes and you've got to get out You're going to run. <laughs> You're going to get to that post office. <laughs> exactly. 